I will begin this lecture by discussing exercises 4 with you. This is on um, random variables, their PDF, CDF and um, uh, expectations etcetera. So, uh, let us look at question 1. Consider the function f x given by c times 3 x minus x square for x uh, lying between 0 and 4 and 0 otherwise. So, the question asked is, could f x be a probability density function for any value of c? Now, without proceeding further, you can just see that um, since uh, the uh, function can be written as um, x times 3 minus x. So, it will be negative for x uh, greater than 3 and your interval is 0 to 4. So, the density function and you know uh, if the sign of c uh, you, you might say that we can make c negative, but then when x is equal to 2 say for example, then uh, 3 x minus x square is positive. So, in that case again c times uh, 3 x minus x square will become negative. So, uh, in fact, for no value of c is uh, the current function uh, p d f, because it is not non-negative for all values of x in the interval 0 4. Okay. Now, we say that suppose we require the function to be a probability density function, when x is between 0 and 3. So, that makes sense, because then um, in the interval 0 to 3, uh, 3 x minus x square is non-negative. So, then uh, c will be chosen as uh, some number no, uh, which is also non-negative, in fact positive and, um, and the condition uh, the way you will obtain c would be you integrate the given function from 0 to 3 and then uh, the integral must be equal to 1. So, therefore, uh, you can answer this question in this way. Uh, the uh, question 2, the probability density function of x, the lifetime of a certain type of electronic device measured in hours is given by. So, f x is equal to 15 by x square, x greater than or equal to 15 and 0 when x is less than or equal to 15. So, that means, the device is guaranteed to uh, run for more than uh, 15 hours. Now, uh, uh, find probability x greater than 30. So, again you can do it uh, by uh, finding out the c d f or integrating this uh, function from uh, uh, 30 to uh, infinity. Right, because the in, this is says 15 by x square is x greater than or equal to 15. What is the cumulative distribution function of x? And uh, what is the probability that six of such types of devices, at least that out of, okay, what is the probability that of six such types of devices, at least three will function for at least 15 hours? What assumption are you making? So, here of course, you see you will assume that the devices are independent of each other and then you will do the rest by finding out. So, probability of one uh, device uh, functioning for more than 15 hours and then you have to uh, say uh, 3 out of 6. So, you can understand what all you have to do, this will become a binomial probability, where um, uh, the p will be uh, the uh, this thing this integral from uh, for at least 15 hours. So, will function for at least um, that six of such types of devices at least three will function for at least 15 hours. So, it will be 15 and more. Okay. So, I leave it to you to do the rest. Question 3 for a random variable y show that E y the expected value of y is 0 to infinity probability y greater than or equal to y dy minus 0 to infinity probability y less than minus y dy. Actually, question 5 should precede question 3. In question 5, I am asking you to do the same thing for a non-negative random variable y. In that case, um, the uh, second part of the integral will not be there, because y less than minus y. So, here um, in question 3, I am asking you to show that for a non-negative random variable y, E y is equal to 0 to infinity probability y greater than t d t. So, once you show this, then you can go to question 3 and do the rest, when y can take positive negative values both. Okay. Question 4, x is a random variable that takes on values between 0 and c, that is probability x lying between 0 and c is 1. 
So, show that variance x is less than or equal to c square by 4. So, I am just asking you to get an upper bound for the variance and you see the in only information you are given is that uh, x lies between 0 and c. So, all mass of this uh, random variable is between 0 and c. Now, there is a hint one approach is to first argue that expectation x square is less than or equal to c e x. You see this is a non negative random variable. Uh, yes, it should have been said that, because 0 less than or equal to x less than c. So, it implies that c is non negative. Therefore, uh, this inequality expectation of x square is less than or equal to c times e x. You see actually x square is less than or equal to c x, yes, for all values of x between 0 and c, because uh, x is non negative right, and c is a non negative number. So, from there you get this inequality when you take the expectation on either side of this inequality and then uh, you uh, show the rest. So, I will not uh, discuss the second hint there you should think and then uh, get the answer. Okay. Question 5 we have already um, yeah. Now, question 5 the second part is that you have to uh, obtain expectation x raised to n and show that it is equal to this 0 to infinity and x raised to n minus 1 probability x greater than x d x. So, here again the hint is that you start with e raised to x n as 0 to infinity, because so therefore, you write y equal to x n and then uh, you will do this and then uh, you know uh, because of the substitution y equal to x n. So, d y will be n x n minus 1 d x and that is how you are getting this part. So, this you should be able to do. Question. Uh, 6. The number of minutes of playing time of a certain high school basketball uh, player in a randomly chosen game. So, this should be player. So, I have just cut the. Uh, so, that means, number of minutes of playing time of a certain high school basketball player in a randomly chosen game is a random variable whose probability density function is given in the following figure. So, this is the graph of the uh, p d f for the uh, uh, number of time uh, the, for the number of minutes that a player in a basketball to team gets actually to handle the ball in a sense right. Uh, find the probability that the player plays over 15 minutes. Uh, so, uh, therefore, here as remember I have told you that this probability uh, if you are saying that the player plays over 15 minutes then you are asking for the probability x greater than or equal to 15. And so, here uh, you will have to you will integrate or you find out the see the 15 will be somewhere between 10 and 20, you know the height of the um, uh, graph at different places. So, the area to the right of uh, 15 on the x axis on the minute axis that area would be the probability that the player um, uh, gets to spend more than 15 minutes on the field in the uh, while playing the game right then sim similarly between 20 and 35 so between 20 and 35 you the area so this will be the area you can immediately find out just by looking at the graph you don't have to do any integration or anything so then uh, because anyway your uh, this thing is not given to you the functional form of the pdf is not given so just by looking at the graph you find out the area between 20 and 35 and that will be the probability that the player gets uh, that many minutes to uh, between 20 and 35 less than 30 minutes same thing so this will be this so the area to the left of 30 will be the answer and more than 36 minutes it will be somewhere here so the, to the right okay so this was just to illustrate that how when it's convenient you can just look at the graph of the pdf and find out the uh, required probabilities Suppose uh, question 7, suppose that the travel time from your home to your office is normally distributed with mean 40 minutes and standard deviation 7 minutes. Right. So, the time that uh, you uh, would spend in going from home to office is a normal distribution uh, with uh, 40 minutes as its mean and standard deviation 7. If you um, want to be 95 percent certain that you will not be late for an office appointment at 1 pm, what is the latest time that you should leave home. So, you have to read this problem at least 2 to 3 times and see the what we are asking is that uh, you want to know uh, the travel time which uh, you can be sure of that time uh, 95 percent of the time that means, you have to find the probability of reaching from home to the office. 
the time which will be uh, possible for 95 percent of the time. So, here uh, that means, if x is the um, uh, random variable denoting the time that you take from uh, home to office, then x minus 40 and x we will say in minutes. So, x minus 40 upon 7 will be the standard normal variate. So, now you want to find out the probability that when this z is less than or equal to some number t is equal to 0 0.95. So, from the tables you get the value of t. So, corresponding value of x is 40 plus 7 into t minutes. Thus, starting time would be 40 plus 7 t minutes before 1 p m. Then you are likely to be in the office 95 percent of the time. In, on time. That means, you will be in the office by 1 p m 95 percent of the time. Okay. So, just read this problem carefully and then. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, question 8, the median of a continuous random variable, this I have explained to you, that the median means that half the area lies on one side and the other half lies on the other side. And I want you to find out, I think I have already done it for the normal distribution. I showed you that for a normal distribution, uh, x equal to mu is the median. So, now for uniformly distributed over a b and exponential with mean lambda, find out the median. Okay. So, this I have discussed in the class. If x has hazard rate function lambda x t, compute the hazard rate function of a x, where a of a x a is a constant, where a is a positive constant. So, you can apply the formula definition of the hazard rate function and get the answer. Uh, the lung ca cancer hazard rate of a t year old male smoker a t is such that this. Now, here I have um, discussed in the lecture that if you are given the um, uh, hazard rate function, then you can compute the c d f of the random variable. And so, um, assuming that a 40 year old male smoker survives all other hazards. So, we are just considering the uh, death because of uh, smoking. What is the probability that he survives to age 50 to age 60 without contacting lung cancer? So, I have discussed part of this problem uh, with you in the lecture. So, you should be able to do it. Now, finally, x is uniformly, oh no, this is eleventh problem, x is uniformly distributed over minus 1 and 1. So, uh, while discussing functions of random variables in the uh, last lecture, I uh, discussed this, uh, how you will handle probability mod x greater than half. Okay. x is less than minus half and greater than half. Then, the density function of the random variable mod x. So, you, this should, should be able to do it. Uh, question 12. The number of years a radio functions is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda equal to 1 by 8. So, that means, the mean is 8. Okay. If Jones buys a used radio, what is the probability that it will be working after an additional 8 years? So, now remember this is an exponential distribution, it has the memory, memory less property. So, therefore, you can answer question 12 also. So, now I hope with all these hints, you should be able to uh, you know enjoy doing this exercise. So, let me now continue with uh, we, we, uh, in the last lecture I discussed functions of uh, random variable, how you find out their uh, CDFs and PDFs and PMFs. Now, uh, let us talk about expectation of function of a random variable. So, if x is a discrete random variable with p x as its p m f, then we define and g is some function real valued function, I should have said that g is a real valued function of x. So, here uh, g x is a real valued function of Okay, small x only, right. Then expectation g x would be, because g x itself will be a random variable. Since x is a random variable, g x will be a random variable. And so, uh, this is summation i p x i g x i. So, let us see how we arrive at this form. See, the thing is that, um, okay, um, I start with, uh, yeah, okay, you start with this uh, uh, summation. Then, what I do is, I uh, group together all the x i s for which the value of g x i is y j, right? because g may not be a single valued function. So, here um, for all possible values of x i s, which give me the same value of g x i. So, then I group this summation here. So, I say j here and then I am summing over i, where g x i is y j. So, all those g x i s get 
summed up here. And then uh, for all those g x i is y j. So, then I will write y j here. Then this uh, summation goes over uh, all i such that g x i is y j. So, I am summing up all the probabilities p x i all x i for which d x i is y j. right? And so, this becomes summation y j and this uh, probabilities they add up, because x i's are discrete and uh, distinct uh, values. So, therefore, uh, you add up the probabilities and that will give you over all i s at the g x i is y j. So, this becomes probability of y g x equal to y j right? of the event. This is a discrete case. So, for all possible values of x i for which g x i is y j. So, therefore, this, this whole thing here is equivalent to this. And so, now this becomes sigma j y j. So, this is g x i equal to y j and then probability of g x equal to y j. So, therefore, by definition this is expectation g x. Hmm. So, this is your uh, the way we define it for a discrete random variable. So, the simple formula is this and I have tried to validate it for you by uh, manipulating the summation terms. Okay. Then, um, in question 5 exercise 4, you have been asked to show, I just discussed it with you. So, uh, you have been asked to show that expectation x will be 0 to infinity, probability x greater than y, when x is a non-negative continuous random variable. Right. So, here we are, I am um, just writing out this expression for uh, the case when x is a non-negative random variable. So, now when I want to talk about expectation g x, I will do it for um, I will obtain this formula uh, for when uh, g x is non negative and then you should be able to uh, take care of, because remember question 3 is your uh, uh, general version, where um, x can be negative or positive both. So, in that case g x can be also a general function taking negative positive values both, but once you understand this you will be able to do that also uh, for the general case. So, I am doing it for g x non negative. Okay. So, expectation g x will be uh, using this formula, because g x is non negative. So, 0 to infinity probability g x greater than y d y. This is I am using that uh, question 5 of exercise 4. Uh, then um, here this I am what I am doing is see therefore, see I try to show you that g x is this function. So, now here um, I am separating out the integral, what I am doing is for g x greater than y, I am integrating this f x d x. Right? So, uh, g x great, so if suppose this is your value y, then you are integrating this area, but then y varies from 0 to infinity. So, that means from here, here, here. So, the whole area, this whole area under g x from 0 to infinity is being um, integrated here. right? Then I can always change the order of integration. I can, uh, you know, add the uh, integrate in this way. So that means here it will be zero to gx. So first of all, from here I come here zero to infinity. Then uh, I from here I come x gx greater than zero, right? So here gx greater than zero. Then I'm integrating this way here, in this way, and then this is zero to gx. So, your um, y the integration with respect to y is from 0 to g x and then g x is going from 0 to infinity. Okay. When g x is greater than 0, I have drawn it this way, it could be uh, whatever it is g x greater. So, you may start from here or your function may be like this, does not matter. So, when you so here the order of integration, first I was integrating with respect to d x and now I have changed the order of integration. So, when I change the order of integration, my y first varies from 0 to g x. So, from 0 to g x d y and then uh, my uh, x varies from uh, corresponding to g x positive. So, uh, this way. So, therefore, I am uh, taking this these lines right and the lines uh, corresponding to a fixed x will be from 0 to g x and then as x varies I am integrating along these lines right. So, this is how I am covering this area. So, this is it. Now, 0 to g x d y simply becomes g x and then this is integral x so that g x is positive of um, g x f x d x. Last integral, the computation has be has to be for all x such that g x is greater than zero. This is equal to this. Hmm. 
So, now uh, it will be good if you can sit down and do it for a general, that means you do it now for the negative part and then you can just add it up right expectation uh, for. Uh, so, uh, in other words I am also telling you how to do your problem 3, first do 5, then do 3 and then you can apply it to uh, do get this result for the general uh, uh, function x g x. Okay. Um, and so, now immediately uh, you can write down that if you take a x plus b as a function of the random variable x, then the expectation will be a e raise to x plus b. Now, you can verify by writing the actual expression. That means, you can write out this expression and then show that uh, what you get will be uh, a into expectation x plus b. Okay. Similarly, uh, for the variance, uh, see the expression is a x plus b minus a e x minus b whole square and uh, b b cancels out. So, you are left with a square x minus e x whole square expectation of this. Then since a square being a constant comes out, this is a square expectation of x minus e x whole square and which is a square times variance x. So, um, I just handled it for this, because this is very often, we have already used this formula in fact. So, I thought let us formalize, once we talk about expectations of random variables, then I talk about their expectations and so on and the applications. Okay. Another interesting uh, expectation of a function of a random variable is the moment generating function and uh, uh, this is uh, very, very important, because in the sense that uh, sometimes uh, it gives you lot, uh, extra information about the or the uh, information that you can sometimes get more easily here, if you know the uh, moment generating function. right? So, let us say um, the definition is that m x t is the expectation of e raise to t x right? and m t uh, m x t I will write here is the moment generating function of x for all values of t for which this exists. Right. And so, uh, some time ago I had shown you that um, this need not all the time exist. Um, right. And so, whenever for all values of t for which this exists, we will say that this is the moment generating function of x. Okay. So, t is a, a real number. So, as t varies and sometimes for all values of t this may exist, but sometimes it may not be, uh, it may not exist for all values of t. So, for the discrete case, when x is a discrete random variable and p is its p m f, then m x t will be expectation e raise to t x p x, because just now we wrote down the formula that for any function of a random variable expectation g x is summation i p x i g x i. So, I am applying this formula and therefore, uh, m x t for a discrete random variable would be summation e raise to t x into p x for all x, the summation is over all those x for which p x is positive, right? because otherwise the corresponding contribution here will be 0. Okay. Then x a continuous random variable with f x as its uh, p d f, then m x t will be minus infinity to infinity e raise to t x f x t x for all values of t for which the integral exists. So, the same thing, uh, it is only defined the moment generating function is defined for uh, those values of x for which the corresponding uh, expectation uh, exists. So, if I differentiate the expression for m x t the moment generating function for x this is d d t of e e raise to t x and then I am taking the differentiation sign inside. And this is easy to explain, because in the discrete case, since uh, this expression for the moment generating function, the summation uh, is a convergent series. So, therefore, differentiation can be uh, passed through the summation sign, right? because this is a convergent sum. So, therefore, uh, of course, we are taking it for all values of t for which this this is convergent, right? So in that case, I can pass through the um, summation sign, the differentiation sign. Now, if uh, x is a continuous random variable, then it is required that uh, this can be shown again because it involves uh, higher uh, level mathematics. So I'm not doing it here. This is that um, if the moment generating function for x exists for all values of t in the interval minus a comma a. That means, this is some interval around the uh, 
value t equal to 0, right. For some a a real number, if this exists, then it can be shown that you can exchange the differentiation and integration sign. Okay. So, in case um, your uh, random variable x satisfies this property, that the um, moment generating function will exist for all values of t in an interval around the origin, uh, around the 0, then uh, you can differentiate the, uh, uh, you can interchange the two signs and then uh, so, uh, therefore, when you dif, uh, differentiate, you take the differentiation sign inside, it will become expected value of x e raise to t x, right, because you are differentiating the respect to t. So, we will write x here and uh, at t equal to 0, you can see that m prime x 0 will be e x, which is the first moment and so on. So, the first derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at the point 0 is the first moment of x the mean or the expected value of x. right? Then, similarly, if you differentiate it again, then you will get x square here, expectation x square e raise to t x. And so, m double prime 0, that means, uh, the second derivative evaluated at t equal to 0, will give you expectation x square, which is the second moment. So, in general, the nth moment or the nth derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at t equal to 0 will give you the uh, expectation of x raise to n. And so, once you have these moments, so therefore, you can uh, you know make use of these uh, things. That means, you, if you just compute the um, moment generating function, you can get uh, the information about all the moments uh, through this formula. So, let me now um, apply, start applying the definition of the moment generating function to special uh, random variables that we have uh, gone through so far. Uh, binomial random variable, the expectation value of e raise to t x would be sigma r varying from 0 to n, e raise to t r, because x takes the value r. So, e raise to t r, n c r, p raise to r 1 minus p raise to n minus r. Okay, this is the expression. I um, will combine e raise to t r with p raise to r. So, this becomes n c r p e raise to t whole thing raise to r into 1 minus p raise to n minus r. Okay. And this you can see is again an ex binomial expansion of the expression p e raise to t plus 1 minus p raise to n. And this exists for all values of t, right? because the expansion is valid no matter what the value of t is. So, this is and now you see what we are trying to say is that if you get an expression like uh, point 0.3 e raise to t plus uh, 0.7 raise to n. If you are given this as a m g f, then you can immediately say by looking at the form of the um, moment generating function that uh, the value this is the bin, this is the moment generating function of a binomial random variable uh, with p as 0.3 and this is your n. Uh, so, the two parameters you can immediately find out by looking at the moment generating function. right? And uh, if now, if you differentiate this expression once, then see from here it will be n derivative of this is p e raise to t. Yeah, I should have said here e raise to t, right? n p e raise to t, then e raise to t p plus 1 minus p raise to n minus 1. And so, at uh, t equal to 0, this number reduces to n p, which is the expectation of x. Right. Similarly, um, if you differentiate this expression twice, yeah, this e raise to t is missing somewhere. So, then um, uh, it should have been sum of 2. So, we will have to rewrite the expression here. Uh, okay. So, uh, it will be, uh, see for example, what I am doing is, so e raise to t is here. So, I am differentiating this again. So, this will be n minus 1 and p here, then e raise to t. So, e raise to 2 t, because there was an e raise to t plus you will have to take the derivative of this, which will be n p e raise to t e raise to t p plus 1 minus p and this whole thing raised to n minus 1. Right. In any case, when you uh, compute this of at the value t, then this becomes 1. So, you are left with n p and minus 1 p. This also is equal to uh, e raise to t is 1. So, this is 1, 1 raise to n minus 2 is 1. Then here also the contribution would be uh, n p. So, uh, is it so? 
and p e raised to t. So, the second moment I am getting as okay, and then from here uh, n into n minus 1 and square. Ah, so, this is not correct. Na? So, therefore, this will be plus. So, that means, here when you put t equal to 0, you are getting n into n minus 1 p square, this is ok. Then from here, you will get another n p, because this is 1, this is 1 uh, and the whole thing is 1. So, this is plus n p. Now, it makes sense, because you have n p. So, n square p square minus n square p square goes away, then minus n p square plus n p. So, minus I should write out the, yeah, okay. so minus n p square plus n p, which is n p into 1 minus p. So, n p q, this is the formula for the variance. Okay. So, please be careful when you are differentiating these expressions. Okay. Similarly, we can apply now, uh, we can obtain the moment generating function for a Poisson random variable and uh, this will be expectation e raise to t n lambda raise to n into e raise to minus lambda upon n factorial n varying from 0 to infinity. Here again, I will couple e raise to t n with lambda. So, this will become lambda e raise to t n uh, into e raise to minus lambda n factorial. So, now this is what the, uh, uh, the, value, the value of the random variable that you are taking. So, at x equal to n. Um, and this will be, uh, if you take e raise to minus lambda outside, this is the expansion of. So, lambda e raise to t raise to n upon n factorial is the expansion of e raise to lambda e raise to t. So, the expressions may look a little complex, but uh, handling them is not uh, uh, much of a problem. So, here um, uh, the whole thing adds up to. So, therefore, in this case also the uh, uh, series is convergent for um, all values of t and so that is what I am saying, if defined for all values of t and this can be rewritten as e raise to lambda e raise to t minus 1. So, if you differentiate, so here again say for example, if I get a term, if I say that the m g f is say 3 e raise to t minus 1, then immediately by looking at this function, I will say that uh, the corresponding random variable is uh, a Poisson random variable with, uh, with mean 3 an m g f of a random variable x will characterize the probability distribution function of x. So, when you differentiate this again, so let me go through the uh, you know calculations, because there might be some error again. M prime, m prime, so, first derivative of m with respect to t uh, here would be, uh, see um, the derivative of this would be lambda e raise to t. So, lambda e raise to t, then into e lambda e raise to t minus 1 and evaluated at t equal to 0, that gives you lambda, which is expectation of x. Second order derivative, so there are two terms now involving t. So, the first one, the derivative is lambda e raise to t into e raise to lambda e raise to t minus 1 plus the derivative of this would be lambda e raise to t lambda e raise to t and the same term here. Okay again uh, evaluated at t equal to 0, you get lambda from here and you get lambda square from here. So, this is lambda plus lambda square. So, variance is lambda plus lambda square minus lambda square, expectation of uh, expectation x whole square. So, therefore, this is again lambda. So, the verification right? Uh, alternate ways of uh, uh, computing the same quantities. Exponential random variable uh, with the lambda as its parameter, then this will be 0 to infinity lambda e raise to t x into e raise to minus lambda x t x. And here again, I couple the terms, uh, the powers of e. So, I get, so the moment generating function would be 0 to infinity lambda e raise to minus lambda minus t x t x, which I can rewrite as lambda upon lambda minus t. Uh, integral 0 to infinity lambda minus t e raise to minus lambda minus t x t x. And you can see that this integral is defined for all values of t less than lambda, because this exponent must be, see this quantity must be um, 
negative so, sorry this quantity must be positive. So, that minus of this is negative and then at infinity this will go to 0 and therefore, uh, the integral is defined only for lambda uh, for t less than lambda right. For t greater than or equal to lambda the integral does not exist. So, this is important to note and therefore, that is what I was saying that the moment generative function need not exist for all values of t. We have to specify the values of t for which the integral uh, exists. Now, make the substitution to integrate this you make the substitution y is equal to lambda minus t x d this gives you d y is lambda minus t d x and uh, therefore, uh, uh, this integral transforms to lambda upon lambda minus t. Uh, see here this lambda I wrote as uh, lambda upon lambda minus t into lambda minus t right. So, uh, to get it in the proper form. So, then uh, lambda minus t d x uh, transforms to d y this is d y and e raise to this thing is e minus y simple integral uh, this is this. So, therefore, uh, minus e raise to minus y 0 to infinity is lambda upon lambda minus t. M g f exists for t less than lambda and not t less than or equal to lambda. You can say that the corresponding random variable is exponential with parameter lambda right. And if you do the simple verification here, derivative would be uh, lambda upon lambda minus t whole square. There will be a minus sign with this, but then since this is in the denominator another minus sign and they both multiply to be positive. Therefore, m prime x 0 is lambda upon lambda square, which is equal to lambda 1 upon lambda. Okay. Now, similarly you can compute the second order moment and then. So, that is why you know that the name is very suggestive moment generating function. This function generates the uh, different moments for the uh, probability density function. Okay, um, normal distribution again uh, it may look very cumbersome, but actually uh, it is a simple manipulation of the terms and you get the answer. So, for a normal distribution the moment generating function would be uh, so, 1 upon root 2 pi sigma minus infinity to infinity e raise to minus x minus mu whole square upon 2 sigma square plus t x right you are computing expectation of e raise to t x. So, here I combine this in this square terms. So, this becomes uh, 2 sigma square x t 2 sigma square x t. So, I collect the x terms. So, the x terms are uh, twice mu plus sigma square t plus sigma square. Now, I want to make a perfect square and the reason is obvious right. So, that uh, the uh, integrand uh, part of the integrand will um, uh, add up to or integrate to 1. So, uh, you see uh, to this I must have x minus mu minus sigma square t whole square. So, therefore, I have uh, added mu plus sigma square t whole square to make this perfect square. So, therefore, I must subtract. So, minus mu plus sigma square t whole square and the mu square from here is the remnant. So, therefore, uh, this is what you have. Uh, so, this square plus mu square minus this right. Now, if you simplify this the mu square cancels out you are left with minus 2 mu sigma square t plus sigma 4 t square. So, uh, this term I have written out here as this separated it out and this is a constant because there is no function of x here x is this is d x in fact d x goes here and you see that this integral in that case. Now, this is a, a p d f of a normal random variable where the mean is mu plus sigma square t not mu, but does not matter the other things remain the same. So, this is a, this is the p d f of a normal uh, mu plus sigma square t and sigma square the variance does not change this is under root of sigma square and this is 2 sigma square. So, only the mean has shifted from mu to mu plus sigma square t and therefore, uh, this integrates to 1 right. The p d f of a normal standard normal variate this integrates to 1 and here you are left with just this part 2 sigma square t mu plus sigma square t o t square divided by 2 sigma square. So, this is it. So, when you cancel out the sigma square part you are left here with mu t plus t square sigma square by 2. So, a simple form here again and you can uh, now differentiate this and so that means, let, let just take the first derivative what would be the first derivative. The 
this is T. Yes, so this is E mu T plus sigma square T square by 2 into the derivative of this, which is mu plus twice. So, sigma square T. So, at T equal to 0, this is 1 and this is mu. So, the first derivative for the first mean, uh, the first moment, which is the mean. I right. similarly differentiate it again and then find out the second order moment and the variance. So, I think this uh, illustrates quite well uh, the, uh, uh, the concept of moment generating function and how you make use of it. And of course, that it uh, definitely characterizes uh, the uh, uh, PDFs, because uh, by looking at the form of the MGF, you can, um, you can say what the distribution would be and what would be the corresponding parameters. Then, there is still more uh, interesting applications of the MGF. This is when I talk of uh, jointly distributed random variables and then you can the use of the concept of independence and so on. So, the all these things get connected and I will try to show you the uh, further properties of the MGF. So, let me now uh, look at the rand, uh, moment generating function for the gamma, uh, for the gamma uh, random variable. Uh, so, the expectation e raise to t x would be 0 to infinity lambda e raise to minus lambda x, lambda x raise to alpha minus 1 upon gamma alpha into e raise to t x d x. Right. So, again combine uh, this thing and here you see uh, t less than or equal to lambda, then only this, uh, because this is not defined unless, I mean the whole integral will become improper, if uh, t is greater than lambda. So, therefore, uh, this integral will exist as long as uh, t is less than or equal to lambda. Right. So, now you have this expression. So, again the trick is that I try to uh, uh, manipulate the integral, add, subtract, divide or multiply. So, that <coughs> I get into a familiar form plus a constant, uh, into a constant. So, here you see the parameter uh, from shifts from lambda to lambda minus t. So, that is what I will do uh, and that is not difficult, because this lambda I can write as lambda upon lambda minus t into lambda minus t. So, this becomes my parameter here. This is e raise to minus lambda minus t x. Now, this lambda same thing I will do. I will uh, replace it by lambda minus t and then divide by lambda minus t raise to alpha minus 1, because this is alpha minus 1 and the lambda raise to alpha minus 1 comes out. So, you see this part is now independent of this is independent of x. The uh, remaining portion uh, all this is now the uh, uh, integral of the PDF of a gamma distribution with the parameter uh, lambda minus t and alpha. Right. So, instead of uh, parameter being lambda, it is now lambda minus t for um, you know any fixed value of t. And so, the parameter will change as you change, but given a value of t, then this will be uh, the uh, integral of the p d f of a gamma distribution with parameter lambda minus t and alpha. So, therefore, uh, this whole integral, this thing goes to uh, is equal to 1 and I am left with the term lambda upon lambda minus t raised to alpha. And so, this is your uh, m g f. Now, if you recall for, for an exponential distribution, the m g f is lambda upon lambda minus t, if lambda is the parameter. So, uh, what is the, uh, turning out to be the uh, an, uh, exponential is gamma 1 comma lambda, that means the, uh, oh, okay. I have been saying it out the other way. So, alpha is the first. So, that means, here I want to say that this is gamma alpha and lambda minus t. Sorry. So, please uh, the, uh, the alpha comes out to be the first parameter, this is the second. So, then um, your exponential is 1 uh, lambda. Uh, see, if you if you looking at gamma alpha lambda, then for alpha equal to 1, this becomes exponential lambda. right? And here uh, you see the, uh, the um, so therefore, now through when I when I have talked about uh, jointly distributed random variables, sum of uh, independent identically distributed random variables and so on. So, there will be a lot of uh, interconnections that I would like to show. So, essentially what we are will be deriving here is that first of all um, uh, the result that if you have uh, sum of two um, independent random variables, then the m g f of the sum is the product of the corresponding m g f. 
So, here you see uh, applying that iteratively, it turns out that um, uh, gamma alpha lambda is actually the sum of uh, exponential uh, independent exponentially distributed lambda variables, uh, exponential distribution uh, random variables each with parameter lambda. That means, identically. So, alpha alpha is an in, in case alpha is an integer, then uh, gamma alpha lambda is sum of alpha independent exponential random variables with parameter lambda. So, this is what the result will be. So, and therefore, that is what I am saying that uh, we will be able to show these kind of things through the help of uh, MGFs, because here this is lambda upon lambda minus t raise to alpha and this is alpha of them you add and they are independent. Then uh, the MGF of the sum of these alpha independent exponential random variables will be a gamma distribution, because the m g f of this uh, sum would be the m g f here, which is alpha times this. So, you multiply the uh, uh, corresponding m g f s, when the variables are independent and then um, if you are talking of the m g f of the sum. right? So, uh, we will develop this theory, uh, as soon as I talk of jointly distributed random variables. Now, just two questions before I uh, finish this topic and this is x is a continuous random variable with p d f f x show that expectation of absolute of x minus a is minimized when a is equal to the median. So, we have defined uh, the median for you and here see what we are saying is that this will actually come out to be a function of a right this expectation and therefore, um, you want to minimize it that means, you will differentiate with respect to a the expression that you obtain for this expectation of absolute x minus a and then um, find out the critical value or the value at which this becomes minimum. So, you will have to show that it is the point at which the uh, area under the curve is half. Okay. Now, uh, the, um, I will just give you a hint. So, expectation absolute x minus a would be absolute x minus a f x d x, which you can you know like either x is less than a or is x is greater than a. For x less than a, we will integrate from minus infinity to a. right? So, then this will be a minus x f x d x, because the integrand has to be positive non negative. So, this will be a minus x for x less than a and then a to infinity x minus a f x d x. So, the idea is that you differentiate with respect to a. Now, all of you have already done this much calculus, you can uh, integrate. So, this will be uh, you know when you have uh, in differentiation under the integral sign, essentially you have to apply that your limit is a function of the uh, variable. I mean, you are treating a as a variable now, because this whole thing is a function of a now. Fine. So, you can do this. Now, similarly, mm, just uh, take an example. So, let x be n mu sigma square. So, x is normally distributed with mu, uh, with parameters mu and sigma square and has m g f m t. Uh, define psi t as log of m t, then show that psi double uh, second order derivative of psi at 0 is variance x. And so, there are interesting functions that you can define through your m t. We will also be talking of the characteristic function. So, now for example, m x t for a normal is this. right? So, if you take log of this, this which we are calling as psi t, then this will be equal to mu t plus sigma square e square by 2. right? And so, if you take psi prime t, this is uh, mu plus uh, sigma square t right? and then psi double prime t will be simply sigma square, which is and therefore, this is also psi, because that is a constant. So, the second order derivative of psi is a constant. Uh, so, if psi square 0 is also sigma square. So, this is the answer right? and so one can go on on doing a lot of interesting things with this and I will be developing some more results here in the next lecture.